Welcome everyone, welcome. This is Cat Diva and you are watching The Eden Room today. We are so blessed to have all the way from New Orleans, our very mm -hmm. special friend, Nicole. Nicole is an evidential medium and she'll uh, share a bit more about how she works and what she does. Our intention today is that we're gonna be connecting with the other side, with loved ones and our dear departed, um, that we want to connect with. And so I'm just going to set the intention that this is for your highest good today, that you relax and enjoy this time. This is a special sacred time for you. And um, that you know that you're in a, a beautiful safe space with Nicole and with, with myself today. And if you have questions or there's things that you want to ask Nicole, we really, really invite that. This is a, a very interactive session and we really want it to be a co-creation and a collaboration with you so you know don't hold back don't feel shy we are inviting you into this conversation into this um discussion and into this meeting that we are having with the other side so welcome you are in the right place and um thank you for trusting this space and um, for trusting us with what I'm sure for some of us is super tender. Some of us, we've lost loved ones very recently with the current situation in the world. And for some of us, maybe we've lost someone some time ago, but it's always with us. And Misha, um, Nicole is gonna share a lot more about, about this. So I'm gonna hand over to her now. And um, yeah, I'm very, very grateful I'm grateful to you, Nicole. I'm gonna hand this, hopefully this will work if I, there we go. Hello, my love. Oh, Thank you so much for being here. Will you? There I am. Boom, here you are. There she is, looking amazing, all the way from New Orleans. Um, oh. For anyone that doesn't know what an evidential medium is, will you start off by sharing with us a little bit of more course. about how you work? Yeah. So it's very interesting. Um, let me start by saying that um, in New Orleans, where I've grown up, um, I live now a little north of New Orleans, but where I grew up, mediums, psychics, tarot readers um, were all literally outside of the Catholic Church. So we have a Catholic church that's really the prominent church called St. Louis Cathedral that's in the center town square um, of New Orleans proper and in the French Quarter. And right outside the doors, you're finished, you know, you're finished mass, you walk out, tarot readers, you know, it, and it just was a way of life. So um, for me personally, it wasn't that big of a deal to have, um, you know, to, uh, to have mediumship in my life because I'd always grown up with it being somewhat of the norm. Um, so what was important for me is um, I didn't set out to be a medium or I didn't train to be a medium. It's just something that I always just had inside of me. So when I um, did decide um, that this was my calling and it was something that I wanted to really start doing, um, professionally, um, I didn't realize that there was actually um, a format, if you will, or like a learning process that you could go through um, to understand um, spirit. So um, because I would just simply gather information and regurgitate or repeat or, or kind of like just um, feel into it and voice be the conduit of what I was hearing. So evidential mediumship really became sort of like the thing in the last few years. Um, and I feel like what it does is set you apart in a sense from, um, from the mediums that sit outside the Catholic church, right? So, um, and the difference is, I'm sure that they were beautiful mediums, but the difference is that with evidence, it comes across in giving you information that you can validate and so when you receive information that you can validate it makes the um it makes the words or the the love or the emotions um really connect deeply because it would be easy for someone to just say you know i have your father in the spirit world and you know he's sorry for all the things that he's done and he loves you so much 
So evidence comes into play when it's, um, I have your father, I know that he did this, he's telling me he had three children, one of his sons is named after him, you know, that's evidence. So when you're on the receiving end from evidence, um, it's really important that you can relate with what I'm saying. And when you're speaking back to me, so when I give readings today, when you're speaking back to me, um, it's really important that you say things like, yes, I can understand that. Um, I'm not really sure. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, you said five things that were correct, but this I'm not so sure. So it's really important that you give that type of feedback because anything else that you give me um, is really going into the Nicole side of me, the Nicole brain. So it makes me kind of like have to process two different realities. So I prefer to stick with the spirit world. So I give you the information, you agree, you say, yes, that's who he is. And then we go further into a reading. And that's really the evidential part of a reading. It's just to give more, to make it more valid, to make it more um, intense, and to allow you to really walk away going, I know without a shadow of a doubt that she connected in with this person. Mm. So that's the evidential part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's all. You, you know, I just want to say, Nicole, I, I just love your warmth around this subject. I feel like it's something that a lot of us keep at arm length and find scary. Mm -hmm. And um, you bring this humanness and this naturalness and warmth to it so that it just feels so right. And I'm sure that in the past, we connected with our ancestors on a regular basis. And it was just a natural part of life. Like in the Amazon, they actually bury their deceased underneath their homes as a kind of symbol of the fact that we're all standing on the shoulders of those who've walked before us and we're kind of building on the legacy of even like their DNA <laughs> um, and That's their true. lives. So, you know, there's so many incredible people in our, in our line, I suppose. And how should people listening or watching you receive the most from this session today, what, what do people need to know? How can they work with you the best in this next 45 minutes or so that we're lucky enough to have you online? So what's the best thing to do is I do an opening prayer when, before I start every reading. Um, and so let's do the opening prayer. And if we do, we'll do my opening prayer and then you can feel into the energy that I'm asking you to step into. So how's that sound? Perfect, thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to mute my mic over here. But I'm okay, perfect. All right. So for everyone that's with us, I one more to admit when I ended that. Okay. So for everyone that's with us, what I'd like you to do in this opening prayer is I want you to begin by using your imagination. And to do that, I want you to imagine that there is this beautiful, gorgeous ball of white light that sits right at your chest, right at your heart chakra. And this ball of white light holds your essence, it holds your story, and it also holds the memories of your loved ones and spirit. I have a ball of white light that I procured that sits right at the center of my chest as well, and it holds empathy and compassion, and a deep desire to connect in with you on soul level, but also to connect in with your loved ones and spirit, to be their voice box and to be the conduit. So what I want you to do is I just want you to imagine that this beautiful ball of light, white light that's connected to you and will never be disconnected. It's connected, it belongs to you. I just want you to imagine it, however, just coming across the table, just like we're just all sitting at this beautiful round table. So your white light is coming across the table and it's connecting with me right at the center of my chest, right at my heart chakra. Remember, Lee, this is all energy. So as I feel into your energetic connection, I in turn have my white light beaming out from the center of my chest and connecting in with each one of you individually. I ask you to take in my white light if you'd like to. Scroll your choice. Breathe it in. 
But what we're doing is we're just creating an energetic connection between the two of us. So just imagine just the two of us. And then when we're done with the reading, our energy will just be dissipated. So the white light will just dissipate. But for right now, we want to build the power. So in your mind, I want you to ask your spirit guides to step forward. And even if you've never connected with your spirit guides before, it's totally fine. We all have spirit guides that help us. I want you to ask them in your mind to step forward. And as they do, they're going to surround you in a semicircle right behind you. So all of us have these spirit guides that are surrounding us in semicircle. So if you're looking it down at us, it would just look like this beautiful, these beautiful flower petals. They're just forming behind us. And as our spirit guides form behind us, they connect with one another and they hold hands and they form this gorgeous, beautiful energetic circle that's surrounding us. And we ask our guardian angels to come down and hover over us. And we ask the ascended masters to be with us. The great spirit, the God source, the bright light of humanity to be with us. So we connect in with our loved ones and spirits. So now we're going to take our white lights and just bring them to the center and up, 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 up. Form this gorgeous crystal pyramid that hovers above us. And this is my sign for spirit to step into the space. So as they step in, I'll start feeling into them and then I will give you the reading. So whenever you're ready, just breathe it in. Go ahead and open your eyes and Kat, if it's okay, we'll just begin here and start the reading. Sounds good? Absolutely beautiful. Perfect. Thank you, Nicole. Okay. Okay, so the first um, person in spirit that I have coming through is um, a mother energy, and she makes me very much aware of the fact that um, there wasn't time to say goodbye, and it feels like there is this um, feeling that her daughter would have a disconnect, but only because of that reason. And um, she's coming through and making me aware of the close relationship that they had with one another, but she wasn't, they weren't able to be together at the time of her passing. So my question to everyone, I can't see anyone's faces. So if, if you would like to put your video on, you're more than welcome to, that way I can see you. But if this resonates with you, most importantly, um, show up and show me your face so that we can connect. So can anyone connect with this um, little bit of information that I'm giving? Thank you for showing up, Emily. See your face. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else can connect. Hey, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know that I have her here with me. So is that, hey, Stephanie and Lynn. Can anyone connect in with that information? Like I'm not able to be with her at her passing. It's a mother, a mother energy, anyone? Stephanie, anybody else? Perfect, okay. All right, so we're gonna go with Stephanie for a minute. Okay, so Stephanie, just to let you ladies know, Stephanie is actually a friend of mine. Thank you for hopping on. And I have read Stephanie before. So Stephanie, I will have to give you information that I've never given you before, okay, of the connection that I'm having with her, all right? And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you ask you to unmute just so that um, we can talk back and forth with each other. Okay, mm -hmm. so you would understand um, not being able to connect in with your mom at her passing, correct? Yeah. Okay, yes. and would you also understand um, this feeling of also, um, I don't feel as though she was able to um, speak her words very well at the end. Do you understand this? Yes. Okay. Um, and also, I want to say that there is this feeling also that um, it's almost like she should have, it's almost like she should have, like, she's, I just want to say she's saying like she's cheated death for a long time. So it feels like she, yes. you do you understand? So it feels like yes. these things like would have happened throughout her life. And it's just yeah. like this feeling of like, 
And I have to say also that there's this feeling of like, oh, it's like almost like finally I get to release myself from this body because I feel like I'm caged inside of it. You understand? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now I also want to say too, when I did the reading for Stephanie, I really didn't bring through your mom very much. It's just no. a little bit of a tidbit. Um, and so um, when I connected with her even more, she just keeps talking about this fact that, um, you know, it's like, um, I feel like she was also this powerful woman in her own right. And it feels like to me, like I have like a lot of words to say, but I feel like I hold back on my words. Do you understand? Yes. And I also feel like though, if you, I, when I'm going to speak my words to you, you're going to get it because it feels like it comes out forceful, forcefully. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I want to say this and would you also, would it resonate with you that she would have a sister in the spirit world? No, she does not. Okay, there's another woman that's with her and it feels like a sister spirit that's with her. So right. I'm not, she's showing me sister because she's making me feel like they're bumping up against each other. So I don't know if there's like a sister-in-law, even like a best friend or someone that you would have considered being like a sister to her, but there's another female in the spirit world with her that she wants me to make you aware of. So okay. for whatever it is, that's for you to just kind of like go into, but it's like a sister okay. of sorts. So it's a sister okay. feeling. Okay. Now I also just want to say to you, cause um, it's just very, okay, let's see how to tell you this. This is extremely random. Like this is one of those things that are really random. So the whole thing I'm talking to Stephanie's mom, and this is why I love to have notebooks in front of me, is this is what I keep drawing. Do you see these big stars? Yeah. So I'm not sure what this means, but it feels like I'm just talking about these three gold stars that I want to give you. Would you understand like three big things, like accolades that you've achieved in your life, but it have to be like a three, like three championships or three something. Do you understand this? Yes, yes. Okay, because I want to bring up the three gold stars. It's nothing that I would have ever told you in life. Do you understand? I would have never told you like how proud I was of you, how I would have never like given you all of the props that you deserve for working so hard. You understand this? Yes. And so I'm giving them to you now because she's making me very much aware of the times when she didn't say anything, when she could have said the words and she chose not to. And I want to say this too. She's bringing up this sense of like, it's almost like this feeling of like, jealousy but I want you to that's the feeling that I'm getting but mm -hmm. I want you to understand it it's really this sense of seeing you do so many different things in your life and her not having like the ability to do yes. what you do do you understand yes. so there's just like and it's like so shallow to say jealousy and I feel like that's such the wrong word but it's the emotion and the feeling that I'm getting you understand? Yeah. So I want to, she's just showing up and she's saying, I'm so sorry that I did that to you. Like it was my own stuff. You understand? And yeah. honestly, I want to say like, it's my own shit. Cause I feel like that's what yeah. she would say. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, my own shit. Yeah. it's like my own stuff. So I just want to come to you and just tell you how proud she is of you. And I need to talk, you still need to bring up these three gold stars for whatever that means to you, but she's giving you these three gold stars and saying that she's acknowledging them. And just to let you know that like this trajectory that you're on, keep moving forward. You understand? And it's like, she just keeps showing me these gold stars that are coming your way. So okay. whatever it is that you're doing. So I'm going to say this, whatever it is that you've been doing, like in the last like two or three days, okay. whatever that is, keep doing it because okay. that is what's bringing you to next level okay gotcha. so I just want to yeah. so I just want to leave you with that from your mom thank you you're welcome okay so that's how it's done girls okay. mm -hmm. so thank you Stephanie for showing up okay you know what? Can you go I, I I was yeah. there were some messages coming in from Emily during that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she was saying um could this be Jacqueline and her aunt was locked in by MS for years. And I could see her really resonating with some of what you were okay. saying. Okay, perfect. Thank you for bringing that up. So a lot of times what happens too is that, especially when we're doing a group reading, what happens is um, they can tag team with one another because there's a lot of similarities that is happening with both of their lives, okay? So Emily, um, I'm just making sure. So Emily, okay, I see you. So let me see if um, I can bring her through for you, okay? So I'm gonna give you some information on other information that I can, hold on, let me get you up. So I'm gonna ask you to unmute. 
Got it? Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some other information and let's see if you can connect in, okay? And you said, who was Jacqueline? My aunt. Your aunt, okay. And she's the one that you said had, has MS. That's her, okay, That's, so let's yeah. see. Okay, so I'm just curious, is this your mom's sister? Yeah. Okay, that's that's probably where the sister was coming from, Stephanie. I was probably having two people. And so she was showing me like the sister and it had to do with you as well. So let me go into this with her. She have so another I, passed also. She did as well. Yes. Yeah, two, two answers. Okay. Okay. So um, so let's go into this. So if I'm connecting in with Jacqueline, would it make sense to you if I said that tw the, the age of 21, if you would know this, the age of 21 really turned the tides for her? So I'm not sure, I feel like that was like the diagnosis stage or something like this, like something happened, it was a big deal. You understand so, this? Yeah, terrible infection that, that brought on yeah, we think it was Perfect. the root cause. Yeah, obviously. Perfect, because she's just talking about this. And I also have to say too, is there, it feels like there's this question of whether or not this is gonna be passed down genetically. You understand? Cause she keeps talking about this. So is there some, she's showing me like there's someone else that's feeling something like it's autoimmune. Somebody's gone through something that has to do with autoimmune. Do you understand this? Um, I've just actually had my vaccine and I'm feeling terrible today. So it, it okay. maybe, maybe that's okay. a worry. Okay, for us. so yeah. here's, so just pay attention to what is going on with you. Just pay attention, like keep your, your eyes and ears and your feelings open. And she's also talking about you, like keeping a journal of the symptoms that you have. She just wants to be precautionary because she just keeps talking about autoimmune. So I just want to put that into your, um, into your mind. So, because she's making me feel as though like the MS was brought upon by something like that, that like attacked her immune system. So, yeah. and just to let yeah. you know, I have a nursing background. I was a registered nurse, but MS is in things like that really not my forte. I was a wound specialist. So um, I'm just going to say that that's what she's saying to me. Um, also, I want to say too, that there is this feeling of, um, would, would you feel like a disconnect between your mother? You and your mother have a disconnect? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. No, it would okay. could it be my mum and the, my, our sisters and the grandmother who was a bit of a disconnect. And so there was a disconnect with her and her mother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay because I'm bringing that up, but mom's in this, but her mother is now in the spirit world, correct? Yeah. Because yes, because she's talking about that. I need to let your mom know that they have connected. Oh, they lovely. have mended their ways. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I, she has to say too that it was really difficult because it feels like the girls had to take care of themselves. You understand? Yes. And so she's just talking about them all connecting. So if you can let your mom know that that as she's connecting in, she's connecting in with her mother as well, and they're all connecting with each other and they're on the same page now. Okay. So and cool. I just want to say too, like life was not easy. No. Do you understand? Like she's just talking about how life was really difficult and she's had to forgive her mother for a lot of the things that happened. So it feels like there's this, this part two of like mother wound that I want to talk. She wants to talk about with your mom too, like considering yeah. the mother wound that's come into her world and that there's some mother wound things that she would love for her to kind of work through before she, she trans, she, you know, she goes over to the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that to you. Um, also, um, one more thing, and she's talking about um, well, actually two things. Um, number one, um, you've just started a new business. Uh, no, no. Okay, have you shifted something in your business or brought somebody new in? I, I'm thinking of changing careers, so I'm sort of um, I'm studying. Is that what she means? Yes. So you're thinking about changing into something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she's bringing this up, and she's just showing me that there's a part of whatever it is that you're changing into that you're going to have to keep some of what you're going through right now. So whatever it is that you're working in right now is supposed to be reflected in what it is that's coming up. Okay, so right. it's something about merging, figuring out how you can merge the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wanna say that. And do you have um, a young child? No, no. 
Okay, I think I'm moving into someone else. So just know that, like, she's just talking about this new, like, it feels like it's a new business. So it feels like something new that's coming up. But just remember that it's supposed to merge. Whatever you're going through right now in your life is supposed to merge into this new conceptual idea of what it is that you're supposed to be putting out in the future. And just one more question. Are you a writer? I've Funny that I've been writing a lot more recently. Yeah, I have been generally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Because this is really important for you to sort, start, sort out what it is that you want to create. And I also want to say something too. It feels like there's a co-creation. Right. So remember okay. this. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, any questions so far from anyone? Nothing's come in yet. Feel free to put in the Perfect. chat anyone and yes oh, thank you you're welcome i was um, really getting goosebumps and getting really <laughs> tearful through that let's see i am attempting so could you take emily off of okay let's see your move spotlight that way i could see everybody else when we pen. okay all righty um let's keep going okay Okay, so this is interesting because what's really coming up now would be, um, so what it's feeling like to me is that I have a child that's in the spirit world and I bring through children pretty frequently because um, I work with a group called Helping Parents Heal and it's a group for um, parents who've lost their children. But this feels a little different in the sense that it feels more like um, you would have, um, you would already have three children, but you would have lost a child, but you would already have three. Does this make sense to anyone? So that would have been four pregnancies. This is me, it's Claire. Yeah, it's me. Hey Claire. Hi. So will we just hear your voice? We won't see your video, correct? Yeah, that's that's great, thank you. No, perfect, okay. So Claire, you have three children, you lost a child. I lost a child, yeah. I've got, um, I have my eldest and then I lost a child. Then I went on to have two more children. Perfect, okay. So like I was saying, it's like, I bring parents, I bring children through because parents show up, right? And so they're like, I, you know, they show up and I'm like, okay, I have a boy in the spirit world and they're telling me this, but rarely do I have the opportunity to bring through a child in the spirit world that, that wasn't brought fully to term. Do you understand? Yeah. Well, she, she, she was term, but she was a baby when she died at six okay, weeks perfect. old. Perfect. So we aren't able to bring in like evidence as far as like what they were doing, how, like, well, I could have brought in how old she was, but more information about like evidential information. So this is where I'm finding it really interesting because we'll have to go back to um, what she more, more or less sees now yeah. as opposed to what she saw, what she knew then. Okay. So let's go yeah. into this. Okay. Um, Claire, I'm just curious. Um, and it could simply be because this is a group reading. We just spoke to Emily about vaccinations, but yeah. was there something going on with her about a vaccination? Um, she she didn't have a vaccination, but um, I, I, don't, I, I don't know whether this is relevant, but I took my daughter, my youngest, for a blood test today. So we've been to the hospital today, this morning. So whether it connects with that. So I'm curious, it could, because that's not coincidental. Um, I'm curious, are you questioning... Um, are you questioning her immune system? <laughs> my, 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 do you mean my daughter that's in the spirit world? Yes. Yeah. Um, when she died, um, it, it was, it was in, recorded as an open verdict, but, um, it was her father that, um, 
found her he she he was lying on top of her um but um it's it's contentious because they don't like i know in america they've slightly changed the law but in this country they don't like to say that it was due to a parent falling asleep they kind of do it as an open verdict but um we had made the decision between us for him for her not to be in the bed with us because he was a very heavy sleeper and he unfortunately took her in the bed when i was asleep and then fell asleep on her okay yeah so I, but is there a question about the immune, about your yes. daughter's immune system? Yes. So when she was born, she had a strep B infection. Okay. Okay. Which then she recovered makes, from. Hmm. Okay. It's okay. It makes sense because there's supposed to be something. She just keeps showing me that the, there's something going on with what was going on with her. So I want to bring up her immune system when she was she was yeah. obviously an infant, right? But there's something with that. And she just keeps showing me something with your daughter that you took in yeah. for the, the the blood test today. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it feels like it's going to be like an uncovering of what's going to be happening. So mm. it feels like there's just going to be more to the story than what is going to be presented to you. So yeah. I want you to be aware of that. And I want you to really um, dig deeper. And I feel like you've mm. become like an advocate for this child. Yeah, I, I, I find it very hard because her, her dad was very much in denial and it, it's very difficult. And um, okay. yeah, I feel like I'm banging the drum for her, really, because yeah. I, I need him to take accountability and he, mm -hmm. he, he never will. And mm -hmm. it's something I have to live with. But yeah, I want for her sake. OK, and so it's also about being an advocate for the one that you brought to the hospital today for blood work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just, this is like an important role. So your really role is to really stand up for your children. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. And she's, so, well, day, so my daughter that I took in hospital today, she's had lots of problems with anxiety um, due to, um, uh, well, it all started when I lost, my sister got ill with cancer and then died three years ago. And so Daisy's had lots of problems. Yeah. Well, she's also had lots of, lots of trauma and tragedies in her life. Exactly. So even if, you know, even if she wasn't, um, even if the baby was six weeks old, um, mm. it doesn't matter. It's something that's in the atmosphere. Do you understand? Absolutely. So it's something that we talk about. So it's just, this is still trauma that you're having with her. So I just want to say that um, it's really important that um, you advocate you're an advocate for this, this child in particular, um, mm. because it feels to me like there's an underlying something that we're missing yeah okay so i just want you to to feel into that and it's actually this is actually something that i work a lot with um mm -hmm. with people that kind of they'll come to see me and they'll say like um something's going on with me and i'm not really sure and i kind of like guide them on this medical journey or of, of like figuring things out and that comes mm -hmm. from the spirit world but it's also like the psychic sense so I just want to put it into your mind that there's a lot more going on with daisy that's mm. the one that's here, right? Yeah. Daisy. It's a lot more going on with her than meets the eye. So mm. you need to really delve into this. Mm. Yeah, she's a very deep, sensitive child. And um, yeah, I, I and she's been very run down because of all the worry. Mm. And also, I want to say, I don't know if this is um, popular there, but we have something that a technique that we use called EMDR or neurofeedback. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've heard of so, it. Mm -hmm. it would be something that I feel, I just keep getting this like trigger in my mind that it's something that you should maybe consider. Okay. Okay. So I just want to leave you with that. Okay. And, and I wanted to say also when I brought through, um, this child that, um, that transitioned the young child, um, mm. I want to say that it's because you're continuing to think of her. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. That is I why can't, she's can't so yeah. present. Yes. So know this. They don't leave us. Mm. They don't leave us. Mm. So for what it's worth, know that she's always there. She sees everything that's going on. One of the biggest questions that I get is, you know, when they transition and they go to the other side, are they doing their own things? And, and if I keep thinking about them, is it going to like interrupt what they're doing? I want you to understand that there is no perception of time. On okay. The other side. Okay. Yeah. So you're not, every time you think of her, I don't want you to think, oh, I'm keeping her from something or something. no, it's yeah. not that at all. And I also want you to feel into the fact that they grow up on the other side or they don't, yeah. it's their choice. Okay. Oh, because right. it's not, 
it's not like a reality. It is like an altered state of consciousness. It's your soul. It's not your physical body. Yeah. So if she can be 20, if she chooses to, she could be four. She could stay yeah. six weeks. It's her choice. So I don't want you to ever feel like you're, you know, when you're connecting in with her, you're like, oh, but I'm speaking to my six week old child that I've, I hadn't had the opportunity to even hear her voice. Don't yeah. think that way. She yeah. is, she can communicate with you. So I just want to make sure that you understand. Thank you. That. You're thank, you. You're uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Um, all right. So, so interesting how the information just comes in and, um, and how spirit just shows up in that way. Okay. And so, um, my next um, person, it's so fun. I, I wish that you could see the way that it happens for me because literally everything comes in from my left-hand side. So it's like, they just like walk in and like, it's almost like they just walk into the left and they like open a door and they're like, hey. <laughs> um, so it's just awesome. Um, all right, so let me say this. I have a, um, you know, I have someone here and he's really making me feel like I want to call him your brother. And I, he comes in so amazingly strong in this vibration of like coming in with all the ladies. Okay. So super excited about being in the space, super excited about coming in with us um, and the girls. And I feel like this would be someone that would have been like a big brother to you. And I wanna keep in mind, if it's not like a biological brother, this feels like somebody that you would have connected in with and you would have seen him as like your big brother um, because he, I'm sorry, he had that feeling. And so when things like that happened to me, like just now I like lost my breath because, or I kind of like had this like sputter. It makes me feel like there was something that happened to him that was very, very quick and impactful. Would anybody understand this information? Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. Okay, I just asked you to unmute. Hi. Um, can you understand the information that I'm giving? I, I think so. Tell me what you can understand. Um, this would be my husband's brother. Perfect. Um, and like you said, it, he the way he passed, it was a, a accident, very forceful um Perfect. you know in, impact so awesome and could I also say that his personality is very much like it's not as though like he's a well he is kind of like a ladies man he just loves women do you understand this like he's somebody that just like shows up and everybody just loves him do you understand yeah and yes. he's just magnanimous like his vibe is so strong people are just gravitate towards him do you understand but yes. there's also this feeling of him being sort of like an introvert and being like i don't know why these people gravitate towards me and there's just like an introvertedness to him as well and i want to bring this up because it feels like he's like a deep thinker but it also feels like from the outside he doesn't look that way do you understand mm -hmm. but it yes. feels like there's some deep thought that this guy has and i also want to talk about um I know that this happens with brothers, but it feels like it's really strong between the two of them, really strong competition between the two of them, like fun competition. Do you understand? But really strong competition. Yes. They were very close in age. So it was a lot of oh, rivalry. Going yes. Out. Okay. And I also have to say too, though, it feels like when, when your brothers, um, your brother-in-law transitioned, it feels like your husband like lost a piece of himself. Oh yeah. Because I'm starting to get really like emotional and feeling into this because he is making me feel like it's like the bond that the two of them shared was almost as though they lived as one do you understand mm -hmm. and he's making me very much is there i'm just curious i am not i i i'm i really shouldn't i'm not even going to say it because i don't want to put it out into the universe but names elude sometimes elude me, but I'm just curious, does the name Chris or Christopher mean anything to you? Um, no, not that I can think okay, of. That's okay. I want you to hold on to this because it feels like, so when something like this doesn't make sense, it feels like it's something that you're supposed to come across. Or you're supposed to see, do you understand? And I want to say this too. It, it doesn't feel like he's very religious, but I want to say that it has to do with like a St. Christopher. 
don't know anything about St. Christ. Oh, okay. But I just want to lay that down for you. And I just want you to just pay attention to your surroundings or something that feels like it's coming up or somebody with the name Christopher that comes into your, you and your husband's life. Okay. So I just want to put that in there. Um, he's also making me feel as though, um, we'll see like a, um, it's almost like fast cars. Do you understand? Is there like a reference to fat? Do you have a little boy? You have yes. a son? Yes. Is he still at that age of like playing with like toy cars? Uh, a little older. He's 11. Does he save them? Do you like have matchbox cars that he saves or he's a car that he saved? Yes, but why. they weren't from this uncle. They were from another it doesn't, uncle. It doesn't from matter who they're from. from. He's showing me like these cars because I keep going vroom, vroom with these cars and it's making me feel like I'm a young boy with cars. Okay. okay. But he's making me feel like I'm saving them. So like I still have, even though I'm 11, you said 11, I still have one on the shelf. Do you understand? There's yeah. something about this. And so he also is taking me into this space, making me feel as though there's a deep connection between him and your son. And I want to share this with you. It doesn't feel like in this life, they would have like had a lot of time together. They didn't meet. You understand? Perfect. But he has a deep connection with your son. All right. Which makes me feel as though like there's a name similarity or something with the name. You got it. Yeah. Perfect. And that's why he was bringing up the, the name that eludes me. So they share a name. Yes. Yeah. And so there's that deep connection. So just because they haven't met the the fact that you named your child after him is just like that's that emotional feeling that i get so he's just trying to show me nicole he's like a boy but he's still a, a kid do you understand you're like he's 11 and i'm and he's saying but he still wants to play with cars so it's this feeling of like just we need to just like let him be a kid as long as we can let him be a kid and really like not let him grow up anytime soon like let him still be a boy so I want to put that into your frame of reference um, with this car because he just keeps showing me. It's still like when you walk into his room, he's like in between that stage of still being a kid and wanting to grow up. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's just this <laughs> feeling. And is there this feeling of also like rearranging his room or doing something with his room? Uh, we just moved. Perfect. Just and it's moved. like, okay. So it's like, taking some of like the old stuff, like the toys and things that he's like packed away and like, you know what I mean yeah so I just want to say that like on the shelf like like these are going to be the mementos that stay here until you like leave the house like and it's like the toy car it's just information that he's bringing through to let you know that he knows what's going on your husband just got a new job um yes uh, less than a year ago yeah we, and it's sort of like job. It's sort of like moving up the ladder and sideways. But it's like, he's saying to me, like he's either, he's like moved up to a different position, but he's kind of like in this position where it's like, it feels like it's something he's gonna stay in for a while, but it doesn't feel like it makes him fully happy. Do you understand this? Yes, that's true. Because he's talking about like, it's like moving up a step, but like moving sideways of being like, mm, it's just kind of like the same old, yeah. same old. It just doesn't feel like there's much excitement there. So um, I just want to say to him that, and um, what your husband's father also be in the spirit world? No. Okay. He's got another guy there with him. Is your dad in the spirit world? No. Okay. He, he's got, he's got an he older a, man. A grandfather, maybe. He was just telling me I've got an older guy and it feels like a father figure. So if this was like a father figure to him or something that he okay. looked at as a father figure, he's got him with him on the other side. And one more thing too is um, with this grandfather that's on the other side, is there a name connection with your husband and this grandfather? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then that's who it is. That's, okay. So I'll let I you know, know that he's got his grandfather on the other side as well. Um, so I just wanted to um, let your husband know, please, that you have this conversation with me today and just tell him that it's like this part where he's just going to hang in there a little bit longer with this position that he's taken. But there's also this part of it of him not wanting to, it's almost like him not wanting to seek the higher level of whatever it is he's doing. Yeah. So there's some sort okay. of fear involved in that. So we yeah, just need to have a exactly. you know, Y'all need I to have a like conversation about that. Scared to put himself out there is mm -hmm. what it is. So we, you need to have a conversation about that because if not, it's just staying the same. 
Okay. That's the way it works. Okay. So thank, thank you, you so much. You're welcome. Okay, Kat, let's do one more. Cool. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Nicole, awesome. we're just uh, basking in uh, your gift, actually. Thank you so much. Perfect. You're welcome. Okay, so let's we have a couple more. of messages come in. Emma, oh, great. Okay. Thank you. It's incredible. She had to leave, but she didn't want to. <clears throat> Helen has said, Is there any messages from her mother and grandfather? Let's see. Would be okay, let's see what we can get. So let me get back to. So I don't know what happened to my screen. Um, hold on one sec, girls. Um, all right, let's see what we can do. I can't see you all for some reason. Okay, that's okay. I'm just gonna keep going. Okay. Okay, so Helen, you sparked something in me. Um, I'm just curious if I'm, I am connecting. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for coming with us, for being with us. Um, Helen, I'm just um, curious if I'm getting any information from you. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put you up so that I can see you. And um, just curious, hey. Hi. Okay, so what, um, if I'm connecting in with your mom, um, would it make sense to you if I said that there feels like it's a, um, there is a sense of like, it feels like connect and disconnect between the two of you. So it feels like she either lived a bit away from you where you couldn't always be with her and connect in with her, or it's a feeling of her like not like not understanding things that you were going through. So she kind of like backed away and then she would come in and then she backed away. Do you understand that? Yeah, she wasn't able to be present for me as a mom. She would like, Perfect. she was physically there, but she just didn't, she didn't, okay. she couldn't protect me or be okay. the be a mom. But let me go into this a bit more. But you would also understand that it was, there's also this feeling of being like circumstantial with that as well. Like when you say those things to me, it feels like circumstances didn't allow her, or there's this feeling of like past tragedies that's happened to her that didn't allow her to step into the role of being like the strong woman for you. Do you understand? I think she hadn't processed any of her own stuff. So to, yes. to open up to my my stuff would have yes. brought hers up. And so she just pretended she couldn't see anything. Yes. Thank you. And I'm, it's beautiful that you understand that because it's sometimes it's so hard for me to explain that to clients, to get them to understand that, you know, our moms are human beings too. They have to process a lot of their own things that in, then they become moms, right? So it's this feeling of um, that exactly. And there's also um, of from the outside, your mom showed me like, it looked like I have everything. It looks like I have it all put together. It looks like we we're like this perfect family. Do you understand? But it's like, feels like on the inside, it's just like crumbling, crumbling. Do you understand? Yeah. And it, I mainly thought she was like the best mom in the world and thought I was just the most horrendous child. Yes. And it's like, everything is, because it feels like she has no control over herself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that also. And um, would your father have been like, almost like in and out and in and out of of her life or your life or like stepping in and and out kind of like this um like psychologically he's very damaged but he was so, they were still married when she passed but it feels like there's a part of like um it's almost like he can't put up with it so he walks away and then he comes back too it just honestly Helen it feels like there's so much dysfunction around you <laughs> and, it's like, and it's like nobody's talking to each other about, about this dysfunction it's like Absolutely. the elephant in the room and everybody's like let's just not talk about this and pretend like everything's fine and it's yeah. so not 
Okay, Absolutely. so I just want to say that also. And um, it's interesting too, because it has given you, okay, so there's something that I know about you because when, when I met you, I was just in with um, Be A Cat. I was just so intrigued by you because I know that you're an actress and I know that you do your cacao ceremony. So I think that that's so intriguing. Um, but I also want to say too, the way that she's showing me is that this, like this life that you led really set you up for the roles as actress because it's like these masks that you get to put on and take off is really how you've really lived your life. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because she's showing me how like you would have to put on these masks to show up in certain situations. It's almost like even when you were feeling like you didn't want to, I think there were a feeling of like um, taking your life or like um, just checking out. Yeah, I was in and out of hospitals as a teenager. Okay, because your mom just gave me this like sucker punch in my gut, making me feel like, Oh, like, and knowing that she caused this and she's feeling like, I need to say in the like I caused this because I wasn't showing up or I wasn't there. And it's like the tragedies and the heartaches that she've had to go through. And it's like, she really is just like sitting there, like as a bystander watching it all, not knowing how to process, not knowing how to help you. And so there's this immense feeling of like grief that comes over that of like watching you like disintegrate and wilt and her not doing anything to step in. So there's this really strong feeling of, uh, uh, I'm getting choked up because it's like this really strong feeling of wanting to apologize to you for not being who you needed her to be. Like she couldn't do it. She just couldn't do it. And I also want to say too, she shows up with these, and this is, I'm not like, people say like, are they are angels? I don't know. Who am I to say that they are or they aren't? But your mom is showing up with these huge wings behind her as she walks into the room. And what's kind of funny about it is it's almost like, it's like they're big. Okay, so I just want to say this. So for what it's worth, um, to you, which it's going to, I feel like this is going to be mean a lot, is as she's showing me her presence and these big wings around her, she's working so hard for you on the other side. She's really working hard for you to be the woman and the mother that you needed, that she couldn't be in this life. Cause there's too many different like attachments that are attached to her. Like she has too many umbilical cords attached to her. And she's making me feel like I didn't know how to clear that those spaces. I didn't know how to clear myself. And so she's like, but I'm free here. And I'm able to be the mom and the woman that she, I hope that she would admire and want to emulate. So there's something about your mom just keeping she just keeps showing up for you and she's bringing you like the goodness that's coming along so i'm curious too because she's talking about this next big thing that just like recently happened for you that kind of like was like oh my gosh i've been waiting for this do you understand well i just moved out of london after living there all my life to the sea and just no logic just <laughs> took this apartment that just felt 100 percent aligned um, your, your mom nudged you. <laughs> so I want you to know that she is with you in that space. This is like that really this is that deep time for you to really dig deep in contemplation. And this is that really, are you working on a script of like writing a movie or writing a book or writing something? Um, yeah, I'm designing courses, but I channeled that I was meant to start writing books when I did this move, but I haven't started that yet. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. She's showing me like, find some angel wings, find something that you can that you can use to represent her. It's not a photograph of her because she doesn't want you to see her in that space of who you, because the photograph of her would be too personal into all of her, her faults, do you understand? Yeah. So it's some, it's a symbol that she wants you to find that can represent her in a new space and time, like a new transition that you can place on your desk so that when you see it, you're like, need to write. And then that's when you allow the information to come through. And to be honest with you, she just said to me, it's a book that's written, written by us both. I'm co-authoring it with her. This is like a fresh new beginning for you to have a relationship with your mother. So teaching moment. Thank you, Helen. 
teaching moment for us through Helen and her mom is that there are those, our loved ones on the other side, regardless of how they showed up in this earthly world and an earthly body. When we transition, we see our past transgressions and we try to make amends for it, especially to the people that hold our hearts. You hold your mother's heart, you came from her womb. Like, and even if you did it, I came, I was adopted. So I didn't necessarily come from my mother's womb, but I know that her heart lives inside of me. And so those moments in time, they are on the other side to build us up, to be with us, to help us to find the way. They don't go to the other side and turn their back on us and go live another life. They are there, they contemplate, they see what they've done. They try to make reparations for this. So know that they're always with you, always, always, always. And it's a moment in time for you to actually understand this too. This is the biggest lesson I feel is that they are, while they may come through, while Helen's mom may have come through and said, for all intents and purposes, I was a really crappy mom. She may have come through and said that, but that is not who she is now. That is who she was. That's not who she is. They are not. We don't carry that. But in order for me to connect in with your mom, I can't sit here and say, I have this amazing mother. She was there for you all the time in this. And you're like, no, it wasn't my mom. So I have to connect with the human that was here. But that human that was here is not who is in the spirit world any longer. Thank you, Helen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, Kat. Oh, my love. Honestly, that time just flew. Okay. Um, thank you so much. You're Your welcome. gift is, that is such a blessing. I feel our community really strongly here, and um, I hope you'll come on the Eden Room again because I, I just know there was so many who would have really, you know, there's just so much benefit from today, and I think it's like bit by bit this is a gift that wants to travel around the world and bless more and more people and I was reflecting when you were just sharing with Helen on some of my own experiences through lockdown where I've seen things from my past that maybe I regret or see differently the power of that hindsight and the way I experience it is like those who are on the other side have perfect hindsight and if Thank we you. can improve our relationship and bridge to the other side, it will it help us live better lives here on earth. It, it truly, and it's, I think that for us human beings, the hardest part is that it's like this, when someone passes, it's like when my father passed and it was like all these people were surrounding me and they were like upset and like crying. And I'm standing there like pretty stoic and feeling like not a lot of those weepy, sad emotions come through. It was more like this feeling of, you know, I'm, it's, it's time for him to go, but he and I have a lot of work we still need to do. Do you know, it wasn't like he's, he's gone. I'll never see him again. And so it made me realize how the rest of the world copes with or sees death as like this permanent ending, never again. And it's like, if we could open our eyes to see it a bit differently, it's amazing what, how our grief can actually turn into hope. And it can actually, grief can actually turn into like this magical connection. And so I want you to remember when I first came on and Kat did this beautiful intention for us. And then I did the opening prayer and I said to you, which was the most important part of this entire prayer was I said to you, I want you to use your imagination because we never tend to want to use our imagination when connecting in with the spirit world. We want evidence. We want proof. We want to know for sure. But we don't expect that any other time in our life, right? So it's like, use your imagination. 
imagine you're connecting in with them. Imagine that they're giving you the sign of a feather. Just imagine that for one whole month, you decide this is going to be my sign from my mom. Just imagine it. Just come up with it and see what happens. Because that's the power of the connection with the other side. It's so beautiful. It's, it feels <laughs> so loving and expansive. And Nicole, you're the most amazing conduit for that. And I'm just so grateful you've Thank been you. with us. There's so many um, in the comments and in the chat, so many people just saying, wow. Claire said, this is the first time a medium has picked up my daughter. I'm blown away. That was so precious when you touched in with her. Um, uh, Shani said Chris was my late husband Lindsay is my daughter I love how you share your beautiful gift um, and a lot of validation from also Stephanie and just a lot of appreciation for you in the chat so I really yeah I just really want to thank you all for being with us I'm sure there'll be another time and keep an eye on Eden Room M Nicole where can people if they'd like to learn more about you find out more about your work where can they find you what should they do so they can just come directly to my website it's Nicole Riley r-e-i-l-l-y.com and you can find out everything about me there um there is a bit of a wait list um for mediumship sessions but go ahead if you're interested in put your name down and my assistant will send you a link as soon as I open up some more times and and that's that's it amazing thank you so much you're Nicole. welcome this is yes. so awesome <laughs> this is amazing. amazing i'm so grateful i'm so thank here for this so love everything that you brought to us and thank yeah. you for, for being this light in the world that you are you're welcome you're welcome thank you ladies for showing up today it was great to have this amazing audience so thank you oh much love <laughs> everyone bye for now bye everybody and thanks to our teams and spirit for being absolutely for sure because they really showed up today so thank you yes all right have a great weekend ladies